How can you go wrong? Mm. What a way to start our day. We had to stop along here because we saw this guy. This used to be a volcano. It's dormant now. At least I hope it is. Don't just eat the Portuguese food. There's great Indian food here too. Just a little spicy. Good thing I got a beer to go with it. Welcome to Destination Eat Drink, the travel channel for foodies. I'm Brent Peterson. I'm an American living in Portugal. And today we are in uh, Peniche, Portugal on the Atlantic coast. But before we get started, if you like food and travel, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you could. Um, so we're in Peniche today, right on the Atlantic Ocean. This is a place that's renowned for its surfing. It also has some great history. And we're gonna start the day as we often do in a pastelaria, a Portuguese bakery. And this place is classic, it's called Cali. And it's uh, Fabrico Proprio. And when you come to Portugal, this is something you want to look for, is the words Fabrico Proprio, which means house made or made in a house. Um, a lot of places, snack bars and even some patisseries, they will have their stuff shipped in from factories, from distributors. Um, but these guys, they make it all in house. And I got to tell you, the stuff inside looked gorgeous. Their cakes looked freaking amazing. Um, but what we're here for is this little treat. Before I opened it, I wanted to show you, look at the, uh, hopefully you can see that. There's a, the logo is a, a woman with a dish on her head, probably carrying fish because we're right here on the ocean. So I like that. All right, so look at this. This is a, um, what the waitress described, it's a nada, which means a little egg custard pastry with almonds, but um, Look how caramelized it is on top. You know, if you see a pastel de nada in Lisbon, you'll have the yellowy custard and then you'll see some caramelization. Some people may say some burning. <laughs> but this is more like really caramelized of, of sugar. And you can see little dots of the almonds in here. So, um, upon first glance, <laughs> upon first inspection, it looks very tasty. Let's give it a try. Oh, look inside. <laughs> So you can see inside the custard is not as gooey and as creamy as you would with a pastel de nata. Mmm. But you know what? It is still super soft. Mmm. Wow. That's good. And the crust is a shortbread. Sometimes with these natas, it's so thin and dry. Not, not these particular ones, other natas that you may get at other places. It's so thin and dry that all you care about is the, uh, is the filling. But this is really a nice shortbread crust. Really good. Hmm. Well done. It's kind of like fresh squeezed OJ. Man, OJ in Portugal is so good. And then I saw this. This has Karen's name written all over it. Pistachio cream on top of a donut with crushed pistachios. And they serve it with a fork. Reminds me of that Seinfeld episode. I saw someone eating a Snickers bar with a knife and fork. I saw someone eating M&Ms with a spoon. Um, so let's give this a, oh. Oh, there's some Nutella it looks like inside, some kind of chocolate filling. Mmm. Wow. That donut is so light. Delicious. Pistachio cream. How can you go wrong? Mmm. What a way to start our day here in Peniche. We're making our way out to the Cape and the lighthouse, but we had to stop along here because we saw this guy. And there's a windmill here that centers this garden, too. I mean, just an amazing spot. But... We had to say hi to this guy. Love donkeys. Hi, buddy. <laughs> so it took about 40 minutes to hike out here from the center of town. And it's an easy hike. It's pretty uh, flat. Although today it's not windy. You can probably see I'm sweating because it is, it's not hot, but it is so humid. And without the wind, 
um, you can feel it. Anyway, behind me is one of the oldest lighthouses in Portugal. This one was built in 1790, and you can imagine why. We're on the very tip of the point here of the peninsula, and with all these rocks around here, it's very dangerous. So in about 1786, there was a horrible uh, boat wreck out here, ship shipwreck, and the Portuguese government said, Portuguese royalty said, we better build a lighthouse, and they did. They built this lighthouse right here. You, the beacon can be seen for 15 miles. So it's an absolutely stunning viewpoint, and if you follow me around here, you can see how we're right on the point here. And directly behind me is Berlinga Island. So that's where we went on our, uh, on our trip yesterday. You can see that video if you want. That's a place you definitely have to go to. But look at the view here with the rocks. I, I wish it was a clearer day. Luckily, we had a super clear day when we went out to Berlinga. Today, it's a little cloudy. I guess, I guess uh, you know, it's a blessing because if the sun was out and there was no wind, we'd really be baking under the sun. But this is absolutely a stunning view. And it's just a 40 minute walk from uh, the center of Peniche. All along the Cape here, there's little stairways of stone leading down to rocks. And this is one of them. We're on the very tip of the Cape here. I would say this, uh, if you have any knee or ankle issues, or if you're at all mobily um, uh, limited, you're not gonna wanna do this. Um, you know, I don't have any mobility issues, and even for me, I was like, some of these stairs are a little bit iffy, but the view down here is pretty incredible, so you can see why people do it. This is the Veranda di Palate, and this is a cool lookout point. You descend this aluminum ladder, and it's almost, this rock formation makes it almost a window looking out over the Atlantic Ocean. You can see directly to uh, Berlinga Island. It's pretty cool. Behind me is the church of Nossa Senhora dos Remedios, and the church is locked up tight today unfortunately, because I wanted to go inside and see some of the tiles. But there is an interesting legend that goes with this church, and that's that in the 12th century, after the Islamic Moors were expelled from this part of Portugal, people found a Christian statue in one of the nearby caves. And that makes sense. Um, the Islamists were repressing Christianity, so they had to take their statues and their icons and their uh, relics and hide them away from prying Islamic eyes. So they did that, but certainly they forgot where they had hidden them after centuries and centuries of Islamic rule. So the finding, uh, uncovering of the statue in the cave after centuries of it being hidden away was regarded as somewhat of a miracle. And they said, well, we better build a church. And that's exactly what they did here near the shore of Peniche. This rocky outcropping is called Volcano Papau, and this used to be a volcano. It's dormant now, at least I hope it is. It's about a 15 minute hike um, up to the end here, and we're at the very end of our hike to uh, Peniche Peninsula. If you want to do it yourself from Peniche to here, if you did it nonstop, it'd be about 90 minutes, but Where's the fun in that? You know, I would dedicate probably half a day. And then from here, it's another 30, 45 minutes walk uh, back to Peniche. So, you know, a good half day if you want to see all of it. Or you could do it in the car and, you know, less than half that time. But it was pretty rewarding seeing all this stuff. Uh, the landscapes, the rocks, you know, who's interested in rocks? They're fascinating. It is, uh, these rocky outcroppings, the formations are spectacular. There's caves that you can see. Um, it's really worthwhile. I would just say this, be prepared with good shoes. I see people in flip-flops here, not recommended. Um, sunscreen, it's not super sunny today, but the sun's starting to peek out a little bit. And uh, bring some water, maybe some snacks too. There are a couple little snack bars along the way, but uh, you know, you might wanna power up a little bit. So I need to power up now. We did bring some snacks, but uh, boy, we've been hiking uh, pretty much nonstop for a couple hours here. So we're gonna get back to Peniche and uh, it's time for some food, I think. 
This is Maharani Indian restaurant. And, you know, in Portugal, you can find tons of Indian restaurants. India used to be a colony of Portugal back in the day. At least they did have a colony there, uh, specifically Goa. So a lot of Indians live in Portugal, especially in Lisbon. It's a great place for Indian food. But all over Portugal, when you're in doubt, um, you can usually find a pretty good Indian restaurant wherever you go. So this is where we came. Um, what did we get? Well, first we got a little uh, tandoori bread. Really crispy. And it came with the sauce. Mm. Mm. Tomato based. Lots of spices, as you would expect. Then we got a vegetable biryani. Look how colorful that is. Tomatoes on top. I'm just going to try a little here. Oh, some slivered almonds here. Mmm. Peas, carrots, cinnamon. Maybe some allspice in there. Mmm. Turmeric. Super tasty. Always a good choice when you come to Portugal. Don't just eat the Portuguese food. There's great Indian food here too. This is Fort Peniche. This fort was started in the 16th century. It took about 100 years to complete. Finally finished in the 17th century. And since we're right on the Atlantic Ocean, this is a place that needed defending. <laughs> Portugal was at war for many, many centuries um, against Spain a lot of the time, but also France and um, the Netherlands and lots of people they were at war with. So um, all of this area up and down the Atlantic coast needed defending. So they built this pretty substantial fortress, but um, you can walk around here and, and check it out and look at the wonderful views. The views here are amazing over the ocean, but the most interesting thing here is the Museum of Anti-Fascism, the Museum to the Resistance. So for almost 50 years until 1974, Portugal was under a fascist dictatorship. Um, it's kind of hard to believe during my lifetime, this country was under fascist rule. And the museum is on the location of a prison where political prisoners were held, tortured, and killed. Um, a lot of them were imprisoned for activities against the, uh, against the new state, um, against Salazar, mainly communists, but also people who were trying to organize labor and women who were protesting for labor rights, and later students who were protesting uh, the colonial wars. So you can walk in there and it is an amazing facility in there. You start on the top floor where the actual prison cells, the isolating prison cells were located. And even though it's been, you know, cleaned up now, apparently back in the day, it was infested with rats and the beds with bed bugs and uh, no toilet facilities. They were just given a bucket that was emptied twice a day. So um, really grim, uh, isolating circumstances that these folks lived under. No heat, no air conditioning. Um, and you can uh, go through and look at the cells and walk inside them. And then on the floor right below that, there's all kinds of artifacts relating to the resistance and the people who were imprisoned here. It's um, extremely moving. There's film from that fascist era that is chilling and information about a concentration camp where many, many people died uh, that was in Cape Verde where political prisoners were sent. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a place where, you know, you've got to be ready for psychologically because it's heavy, man. It's a heavy spot, but it's worth going and understanding. I certainly have a much better understanding of what the uh, fascist regime was like. So you may wonder why 1974, why the fascist regime finally fell. And, you know, we did a video celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution, which overthrew the fascist regime. Um, but the reason behind it, a lot of it was due to anti-war protests. 
Fascinating, right? Um, you know, like in the U.S., we had the Vietnam War, which, you know, changed a lot of things in the United States. Well, here they had colonial wars going on in Africa, in Mozambique, in Angola, and places in Guinea, places like that, um, where all kinds of soldiers, young men, were being taken, uh, inducted into the army, uh, fighting in the war, killed or worse, uh, not or worse, killed or maimed, um, wounded, uh, forever disabled. And the Portuguese populace was becoming less and less convinced that this was a good idea. So they started protesting. And the tide went strongly against the fascist regime. And finally it collapsed upon itself, due in no small part to these people who were protesting and due in no small part to a lot of women who were working in an underground system to take young men and get them the heck out of Portugal and into France. You may wonder why they didn't send them to Spain. Well, Spain was also a fascist dictatorship, so um, got them to uh, France. And a lot of these women paid the ultimate price. A lot of these women were um, imprisoned. So it's a fascinating story. And one of the last things you see when you walk out here is a wall memorial to the people who were killed by the regime. And it not only gives their names and where they died, but how they died. Um, you know, killed as a shot as a protester, um, died from work in a concentration camp, or just tortured to death. So it's a very somber place, but it's necessary if you really want to understand what happened in Portugal for these grim almost 50 years. This place is called Urban Beach Bar, and you can tell the name is apt. We are literally right on the beach. We came around the cove to come here. It's a little peninsula as a part of Peniche that juts out into the ocean, and the surfers take advantage of this spot. Um, this is on the silver coast of Portugal, and all up and down here, there's great surfing. We did a video on Ericeira, which is a world surfing reserve. And a little north of here, that direction, is Nazare. If you've ever seen the show uh, 100 Foot Wave, that was filmed in Nazare. Um, that's where they have the giant massive waves. Now, you can tell from behind me, the, we don't have those massive waves. It isn't that time of year. That comes in winter time. Out there today, probably three to six foot uh, waves that they're, but everyone's having fun. They're having a good time out there. Um, and the beaches here are simply stunning. So if you're a surfer, you don't even have to bring your board. There's tons of outfitters. And if you don't know how to surf, there's uh, instructors here too. So. Uh, what do we get? Well, we just wanted a little snack. So we got some uh, Padron peppers and look at these. You can see they're nicely blistered with uh, sea salt. Mm. Not overcooked. Still has a little bit of a bite to it. So mm. really nicely done. Excellent. Got a little bread to go with it. That's always nice. Hmm. Obrigado. Muito obrigado. Nada. And then some mushrooms. Look at that. Several different kinds of mushrooms in that bowl. Hmm. Tomato beer sauce topped with uh, sesame seeds. Mm. Mm. Just a little spicy. Good thing I got a beer to go with it. Ah, really good. So we had our little snack and our beer at the Urban Beach Bar, and that's on the east side of the peninsula, but you walk literally two minutes, not even, just a couple hundred meters, and you're on the west side. There's no beach here, it's all rocks, but this is the spot where you wanna be if you wanna see the sunset. I mean, look how gorgeous that is behind me. All right, we're gonna watch the sunset, but if you enjoyed this uh, video, give us the like and subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you really wanna support Destination Eat Drink, you can do that at 
buymeacoffee.com slash destination eat drink. Thanks for watching. I'm Brent Peterson in Peniche, Portugal. Thanks for watching. See you down the road.